You know, it's not hard to see why the GOP is losing favor as quickly as it is, given the kinds of arguments and the kinds of mischaracterizations of the left made by you. Now, I didn't make it all the way through the video, but I heard some very brash and untrue assertions about the left's position in regards to torture and al-Qaeda that I just had to stop and I had to make this response. All right? First of all, the left knows full well that al-Qaeda has existed long before, long before detainees in Guantanamo. Al-Qaeda was founded in Egypt in the 1950s as a backlash against the influx of Western civilization. Um, they, were, they were very much uh, in favor of Sharia law. They were Muslim fundamentalists and they wanted to return the Muslim society back to the seventh century when things were perfect. Okay, um, and the way they did this was the most expeditious means available to them, which meant killing any prominent figures that were allowing the influx of Western civilization into their Muslim world. All right, now. As a result of all this, they had fallen into disfavor in the Muslim world. They were very much despised in their own countries. Um, people, not only did they not want Sharia law, they did not want the violence, and they liked Western culture. They liked technology and the things that Western culture had to offer. All right, And there's a lot Western civilization has to offer any other civilization in terms of technology and a lot of other things, all right? But uh, Al-Qaeda was against it, of course, you know, because it's, it's corrupt. <laughs> Western values are corrupt. All Western values are corrupt in the eyes of the Muslim fanatic. Um, but, you know, what brought them back to life? What brought them back as a world player were, were basically two things. Uh, first was the war in Afghanistan. The struggle the Afghanis had against the Soviet Union uh, in Afghanistan, which the U.S. aided the Taliban um, during those times as well. Uh, and they're very much aligned with their efforts. Of course, you know, uh, Al-Qaeda very much likes the idea of Sharia law and holding to strict... Islamic principles and government and everything else, you know, so they're very much allies, they're just natural allies as far as that's concerned. The Taliban never directly threatened the U.S. Uh, in fact, they were somewhat thankful after we helped them uh, oust the Soviet Union, <laughs> all right? Um, but, uh, but after that, basically, they had nowhere else to go. Uh, Al-Qaeda was uh, all but disbanded, and they had, uh, you know, their terrorist attacks, people were very much against what they were doing. Um, and, you know, Al-Qaeda was despised by the Muslim world for being such poor representatives of Islam, all right? Um, but the way in which they resurrected themselves as a global entity and a popular entity in the Muslim world is uh, by the U.S.'s reaction to 9-11. Now, 9-11 by itself could have been the death of Al-Qaeda. If you recall, immediately following 9-11, we had all of the Muslim world, practically all of the Muslim world, on our side. They were shocked and horrified by 9-11. We had Yasser Arafat from the PLO who was condemning the attacks. We had Iran condemning the attacks. We had the rest of the world was on our side and was shocked and horrified by these attacks. Now, what could turn them against us after that? Well, <laughs> they were shocked and horrified. But 
by what the U.S. did in retaliation. What the U.S. did was we acted like a wounded giant. We acted in fear and panic, and we lashed out and we struck out indiscriminately. We broke all our own rules. All right, we invaded Afghanistan when they couldn't turn over Al Qaeda fast enough. Okay, um, I was. I had mixed feelings about Afghanistan at the time, but uh, invading Afghanistan was probably not necessary. I'm no fan of the Taliban, but you know I'm not sure that we're that we can secure a net win by invading Afghanistan. Um, that's that story has yet to completely unfold. Um, but you know, once we had detainees in Guantanamo, we tortured them in order to extract any sort of evidence that would confirm our foregone conclusions that there were ties between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. And you know, you torture someone long enough and they will say anything to get the pain to stop. You know, that is what the left has against torture. One of the many things the left has against torture is that it's ineffective. It's a political tool for extracting confessions. It's useful for confirming preconceived conclusions, okay? Because someone under pain of torture will tell you anything you want to hear, all right? And that's exactly what these these detainees did, all right? We got bogus information out of them that was used to justify the invasion of Iraq. And Iraq was an unmitigated disaster. You know, while we may have been greeted as liberators when we first went in, the party was spoiled in an awful hurry. There was civilian casualties. There was Abu Ghraib. There was the fact that we weren't liberating Iraq so much as we were imprisoning. We were capturing and imprisoning and killing their citizens and their people. It was a, excuse the term, clusterfuck in Iraq. And that's what turned the Muslim world against us, all right? So, yes, there was a core contingency of Al-Qaeda that has always been against Western civilization that was prone to strike out in violence against any number of different targets. Yes, we understand that, all right? It's not anything the U.S. has done besides just being an enlightened Western civilization that has caused Al-Qaeda to behave this way because they are fundamentally against Western cultural values. They believe in Islam and Sharia law, and they don't want to be enlightened, okay? So we understand that, all right? What we don't agree with, the right in their mischaracterization of us, is that, um, uh, is that Al-Qaeda could have been very, very small. They were small and they were dwindling. But what we did by lashing out the way we did was we legitimized them and we turned the Muslim world and most of the world against us. Now the ranks of Al-Qaeda are swelling because people have seen that the U.S. is not the benevolent giant that it claims to be, not when we're wounded and we're hurt, we're scared, all right? And, <laughs> and, and that kind of fear, reacting out of that kind of fear is what turned the world against us, all right? And that's the same kind of fear that drives the need to torture, all right? So the U.S. acting out of fear made things much worse for itself, all right? what could have been a very small contingent of fundamental extremists turned into a much larger contingent of people who were just angry at the U.S. for the way in which we lashed out indiscriminately against citizens of Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, in Abu Ghraib and civilian deaths, you know, one million civilian deaths, four and a half million refugees. That's no small price to pay quote-unquote freedom, all right? So, you know, 
the torture is ineffective. The only thing we did with torture is we turned the Muslim world against us. And what was a very small number of radical extremists turned into a much larger number of angry Muslims. Okay? So that's all for now.